All right, it's time to look at the advanced audio settings inside of vMix. We already looked at the audio mixer. We looked at the included audio settings that are available with every input inside of vMix. But let's take a look at some of the more advanced audio options inside of vMix right now. So you can have real-time audio optimization. You can literally have auto-tuning on a singer inside of vMix using VST3 plugins, virtual studio technology plugins. These are super important audio. It could not be more important. And there's a couple different things to learn about audio. And I'm going to use our studio right here as a case study. Now, there's a technology called Osseo. And don't worry, you may not even need this, but I want to I want to mention it. And essentially what Osseo is, is it's the ability for your audio interface, your USB audio interface plugged into your Windows computer to bring in individual audio inputs into vMix. That's what Osseo is. So if your computer sound card supports Osseo, vMix can bring in individual inputs in into um, into into vmix it's that simple so let's take a quick peek at this um because i have an osseo enabled um setup and it's just it's just it's nice because you have a limited amount of audio inputs and so if i go to my focus right audio driver here i have the option to bring in all of these different channels that's one usb connection but all these unique channels so why is that important well we may want to uh, pl put different plugins on different audio sources. So you might want the singer to have auto tuning and you might want the guitarist to have a little bit of compression and so forth. So think about that. Your live streaming computer might have many things connected to it. You might have cameras connected. You might have another computer connected over NDI to bring in video. You might have a capture card inside your computer. But when we're talking about audio, you might have multiple audio sources coming in and it's nice if vMix can split those off and treat them as their own individual inputs inside of vMix. Or you can just take your whole audio interface and say, this is one input. It's up to you. But the more uh, audio and individual inputs that you have, the more granular control you have over each input. So imagine you've got a guitar, you've got a bass, and you've got two different microphones. Obviously, your microphones you want to treat differently than your guitar and your bass, right? And so that's something to think about. In our studio, we generally have, you know, two microphones. And again, though, we have a, a female, which is Tess, and we have a male, which is myself. And we do like to treat their, you know, their, our voices are different. And so we like to use an Osseo driver to, to have them, maybe we just want to mute Tess because she's going outside to sneeze or something. Um, it's better to have individual control, obviously. Now, Osseo drivers usually will not work in Windows if they're not set up to be the default recording device. So just to save you some trouble if you're trying to set up Osseo, and I'm using a Focusrite USB audio interface, I set it up as my default device and it works perfectly. Now, once we've gotten to the point where we're thinking, all right, cool, we like this. We've got all of our audio inputs into vMix. We've mixed them a little bit. Now we want to add even more you know, quality and control to these inputs. That's where VST3 plugins come in. vMix doesn't support VST1 or 2. It must be 3. And sadly, those are not the free ones. Those are the ones you usually have to pay for. And Waves.com has great ones. They have sales all the time. $20, $30 plugins. So they're not free like VST2 and, and ones are, but they're much more advanced and much you know, more powerful. So I'm going to show a couple today. In fact, I'm going to show my, uh, my voice and I'm going to show my audio mixer. And we're going to take a look at some of these, these cool plugins today. So first of all, um, this is my microphone right here. And it's interesting. Uh, you can see it's going to master, but it also can go to A. And I have an A bus set up as well. Um, that's something that you may do in the future. Why do I have an A bus? Well, my A bus ports to Audacity so I can record podcasts and things. So there's different reasons why you might have an A bus or a uh, just the M bus, but 
you could, those are where those little buses are. And we'll talk about audio routing in this video as well. But let's hit the cog for my microphone. And we'll see here that there's pre and post, right? So pre is what's coming into vMix. Post is what's being processed and sent out. And I'm not using the EQ, a little bit of compressor here, but I'm not using most of the included stuff with vMix. I'm using plugins. And I have two plugins here that I really recommend. I think they're great. One is called NS1, and it is a noise suppression audio system. So if I turn it off, in fact, you know the easiest way to turn these off and on is to click that button. So I just turned off the noise suppression. I'm going to turn off Renaissance, Renaissance Axe so you can hear the difference now of what it sounds like. So put some headphones on. It should be clear the difference there. It really adds a, a robustness. So NS1, if you can only get two plugins for your voice, this one will make you sound so much more clear because all that background noise will be taken away. And Renaissance Axe is one that adds a lot of robustness to your voice and uh, through a, a ver variety of compression algorithms. So just really simple. You can see what it's doing here. It takes the input, it does some attenuation, and it adjusts the output so that you know it doesn't really um, peak or, or anything like that. So those are the plugins that I highly recommend. And then I wanted to show the settings of vMix quickly um, to show you the audio output options here. And so with audio outputs, when you add an audio output to one of these, it becomes added to the audio mixer. So I use a virtual audio cable to route my audio directly to Audacity. And then I select that as my microphone in Audacity. When you've set that up, now you have these little A buttons that you can add. So you can say, I want to route just my voice, nothing else, to a specific area. Um, so it allows you to route different audio buses to various places. I know it's kind of complex and we're still early, early into this unofficial guide to vMix tutorial course. So don't worry if that was overly complex. Maybe you'll go back to this video later, but just wanted to show some advanced settings in audio for vMix. All right, time for our next video.